Break every chain. Do you want to learn more about that? If you will be seated, I'm going to try to approach this idea of, of the chains, of, of breaking chains that the scriptures speak of. And I think it's a true reality. It's called freedom. It's called freedom. It's called freedom. God has a plan to set us free. I'm going to keep saying it until somebody gets it. God's got a plan to set his people free. God's got a plan to set people free. Free from sickness and disease and depression. From all of these, God's got a plan to set us free. The debt's been paid. The way's been made. All it's lacking is for us to come into agreement with Him. This morning I have the privilege of introducing us to this next series that we have here at New Life or next season, if you will. And I'm just going to have just a few ideas as I'm trying to as a pastor and, and uh, uh, Trevor and Dustin and as others follow, that we'll be giving some ideas of what this uh, kingdom lifestyle uh, looks like, what it is, what's the experience of the kingdom. What does it mean to live in freedom? That's right. What does it mean to live in freedom? So we've named this the kingdom lifestyle, and if you'll notice, our pastor, I asked him, All right, what does this mean? He said it means transformation that the kingdom lifestyle is transformation. So therefore, you, you see the man walking down the, the road, and, but then in, uh, uh, there's kind of an inset there of a butterfly, which signifies the man walking into transformation, being transformed. Now, if you are a person sitting here and you're very happy with who you are, just sort of in, indulge, just kind of shut your eyes, take a nap, if you're here and you're not satisfied with where you are or who you are, you need to really take notes because I've got something to say to you this morning that I believe is out of the Word of God. It's very simplistic, very simple, but yet it's very true. So this kingdom lifestyle that we would like to have here at New Life Church is to have a lifestyle with the people that is a lifestyle that's different than the world. It's, it's, it's different, it's, and, and there's a reason it's different. It's not that we're trying to make it different. I want to go into that with you a little bit. How, how do we get there, and how do we see the invitations? Transformation means the possibility of a change. I think some people would like to change my name from Alan Smith to Alan Change Smith because I am constantly in a change move or a change movement. And, uh, but that's what transformation is. And I'm hoping that I'm speaking to somebody that's wanting to change and that's wanting to improve, that's wanting, surely to goodness, you don't feel you've reached your full destiny in life. And I've explained before that we'll tend to battle for where we are out of pride and I, I really think a lot of it's laziness because we don't want to change so we'll battle for where we are and because change is not for lazy people change is for people that's got grit change is for people who want to move ahead change is for people that like to see things do better so in transformation God's given us this possibility of of change now, I want you to consider this. This message I do not predict to be very long. It's short and sweet and to the point. You cannot be transformed if you are unwilling to change. Very simple, but very true. You, cannot, you can't sit there and say, God, transform me if you can. It, it doesn't work that way. You have to be... If you are unwilling, 
How do you know if you're unwilling? You're stubborn. That's what unwilling looks like, stubborn. I will not ask for a raise of hands, but by your faces, y'all know somebody that is. Now, another, another thought. Time does not equal newness of life, but how you think does. In other words, what time, it can be next week, and just because you're that this week or next week, you can get into some new time, but that doesn't make you new. You take old thinking into new time, and guess what? It's still old thinking. You still are where you were. You're in new time, but you haven't moved. You've just spent some time. Now, whether you realize it or not, we all have a specific time on this planet. So we don't need to be wasting time. But just because you move into a new time in life, it does not mean that you're in a new time of life. Because you can move into a new time of life with old thinking, and guess what? You are still in old time. It's very important that we understand how, how, how it works. Time does not equal newness of life but how you think does. <clears throat> so if you want newness of life, if you want fresh life, if you want a life that's moving forward, that means how you think needs to move also. Now just consider this. What others say about you does not matter. Somebody say glory. But what you say about yourself does. Yeah, come on. I give you a quarter if you'll tell me which one is 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 has the worst report. Wow. We get upset when others say things we don't like, but our internal dialogue is worse than that. Yeah. So you live out of your internal dialogue. Now you might adapt and adopt what others say to you when others are trying to conform you into their image, uh-oh. Yeah. The key is, what do you say about you in here? Now, keep this in mind. I'm going to ask you a question. This is a very hard question. You'll have to think I hear for just a moment. <clears throat> oh, I didn't use a big enough font, I can see. What can weigh as much as 14,000 pounds? Don't answer it. Do not say your mother-in-law. <laughs> what can stand as high as 13 feet, 13 feet tall? Is strong enough to rip, rip branches off of trees? And has one of the best memories on the planet? I, I call it a Zaycar of the animal uh, world. Do you remember my teaching? I don't know if some of you perhaps haven't heard it on a Zaycar. It, the word uh, Z-A-K-A-R, Zaycar. In, in Genesis, it says that God created man. God created man in his image. He called him man and woman. Well, the word for man there and woman there is the word Zaycar. It's the Hebrew word. And the word zakar means the remembering one. So it says God created man and woman in his image. God created zakar and zakar in his image. God created the remembering one and the remembering one in his image. Well, what part of God's image were we created in, in his remembering? There's a part of all of us sitting here that was created in the image of God. And that, I don't really think God's probably got two arms and two legs and a head. I don't think that's the image. Because the image is Zachar, the remembering one. So what we have in the image of God is our remembrance, our memory. If that part of you has been created in the image of God, what part of you do you think the devil's going after? 
He's going after that part of you that's like God, which is your memory. You're the remembering one. Now, I've taught this before. I'll not teach it again, but the power of God, the presence of God is in His remembering. Now, keep that in mind. I call this the Zachar of the animal kingdom. Does anybody want to take a guess? That's right. It's an elephant. Now, an elephant is the biggest creature of the jungle and in India. Outside of water, definitely the biggest one. In the water we have some whales and things of that nature. But if you truly wanted to say who is the king of the jungle, it would be the elephant. The lions and the tigers and everyone tries to come against the elegant, the elephant, but one good kick, they're done for. The elephant, though, is the, the amazing part of the elephant is its memory. The, the, they say that the memory uh, of the elephant is, uh, if you compare it to a computer, I, I've saw the, the terms, but I don't know what they mean. But anyway, it's got a lot of memory. And it's memory that sticks and, and that it stays. And that's the reason when they, you train an elephant, they, they never change. They just all, they, they, it's 100% recall. They just constantly recall. They can go back to the birthplace. They can go to a a place of, uh, where a lot of them die that they've never been before. Why? Because it was carried over from the memory of their parents. Wow. It's just amazing how the memory of, of the elephant works. But you've got to keep in mind, the strongest, the biggest animal of dry land, strongest, cannot be intimidated by nobody. Isn't that amazing? Now, the remembering one had to update its memory. Now, you can't quite see this picture, but can you see the picture in the lower right-hand corner of the baby elephant? Now, that baby elephant, you can't see it, but it has a chain around its leg, around its neck there. And what happens is, have you ever seen pictures of elephants and they'll have a little rope or a little chain around their leg, and here's a 12, 14,000 pound animal. They got a stick stuck in the ground over here, and the chain kind of draped around it. It's not even tied. But the elephant will stay right there at that, at that little stick. Now, the reason is when that elephant is little, they'll tie something around its leg, they'll put a chain around it, they'll put it onto a tree that it, that'll hold him while it's little. And then sooner or later, the, the little elephant uh, gets in his head that he can't pull the, tr the tree down. And because the elephant has such a great memory, a tremendous memory, as that elephant gets older, they can just put a chain around its leg, put a stick of stick in the ground, throw the chain around it, and that elephant will stay right there. 14,000 pound animal. Why did that elephant stay there? Because his reality has been created by another. His reality is saying he cannot move as long as that chain is around his leg. Anybody see where I'm going with this baby doll? In the kingdom lifestyle, God wants His people free of all chains. Yes. That's right. He doesn't want you dragging one around. He wants you free of all of them. Now, if the elephant's the smartest animal in the jungle, and as humans, we're supposedly smarter than that, what is the part of us that is our greatest asset and our greatest enemy. Yep. It's our ability to remember. Right. With this animal here, you can see 
How many of us go through life hanging on to a belief that we cannot do something because we failed at it once before? How many of us have avoided trying something new because of a limiting belief? How many of us are being held back by someone else, else's limiting beliefs? Now, with this elephant, as it was a baby elephant, they, I even in some of my research, they said that an elephant could be like they had it at the circus or different places, and they could uh, have, take the elephant into the arena and do whatever. And every now and then, the elephant would just start walking out of the arena, and they would say, oh, no, that elephant's out of control. And they said, no, it's not. It's just going back to its chain. They just let, let the elephant go. It had it in its mind. It was going back to the chain. So it would go back there and stand beside its chain. It would never run off. It would always go back to its, where it was chained because there it felt safety. So if the elephant started fe feeling fear, it would go back to the chain. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. We can see that we can be set free of depression, of alcohol, or drugs, or whatever. It's in our minds that we have to have it. I've got to have this. I've got to have that. We break free from it, but yet we want to go right back to it. Why? Why? It's because there, that is where the elephant finds its safety. The power of the chain. The power of a chain that is not even wrapped or tied. The power of the chain is in the mind of the elephant because of previous events in its life. Now, Let's move a little further. Anything that puts limits on your life and creativity can be a chain around your thinking. Can you see that? Yes. Anything that puts limits on your life and creativity can be a chain around your thinking. There again, we're wanting to move into the kingdom lifestyle. And say, well, Alan, you don't understand. I failed at this, and I failed at that, and I failed at this, and I keep failing. That's okay. I understand. It's a chain. But you got to understand, there's nothing on the other end of that chain. Jesus. Can you hear me? I'm going to say it again. Yes. On, there's nothing on the other end of that chain holding you. It's what's in here. I've had people say, Alan, I can't quit smoking. Alan, I can't quit this. Alan, I can't quit that. Alan, I can't. All I hear is I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't. All I hear is I chain, I chain, I chain, I chain. Come on. Come on. Come on. Why? Because you can, you can, you can, you can, you can. Why? Because there's one bigger in you than you, and his name is Christ Jesus, 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 Jesus. But we have been programmed, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't. That's a lie, that's a lie, that's a lie, that's a lie. Come on. If we're going to live in the kingdom lifestyle, we've got to get rid of some chains. Come on. The kingdom of God is bigger than your chain will hold. Can anybody hear what I'm saying? Yes. Let's try this one. You see that uh, little elephant foot that just came in there? I'll do it again. Watch this. There it is got a chain around it. Jesus comes to set us free and destroy the chains that bind us. Jesus said in John 8, 32, you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. Now listen to me. That is either true or it is false. We got to be big people here. Put on big people's breeches and say that's either true or it's not true. If Jesus, if you know the truth and the truth will set you free, but you're not free, what's the problem? The problem is your memory. The truth of your memory is trumping the truth of Jesus himself. You say it with your mind, but you don't believe it with your heart. Now, the only reason I'm saying this 
is, is so it is possible if you hear the truth that you can reverse those two. That's right. That you will allow the truth of Jesus to trump the truth of your heart. Number one, you've got to be, you've got to quit being convinced of who you're saying you are. And you got to believe who God says that you are. That's called transformation. In other words, you're going to act better than you really are. Can anybody hear that? You, you live unto whom you're going to be. You don't live unto who you are. You live unto whom you're going to be. You're going to be in the likeness of Christ. To do that, to break a chain means that you break or let go a memory of failure, of what the chain is tied to. Now, keep that in mind. So we got the, the, this mindset of the kingdom lifestyle. So we are really serious here about this lifestyle of the kingdom. The lifestyle change of the kingdom means a people who are living a life with no limits. No limits. You've been told you can't do this, you can't do that, and you can't do all kinds of stuff. No, no, no. If you're believing and your chains are broken, where you were once had limits, now you do not have limits. There again, Satan himself is after your memory. He's not after your now. Yes. You say, well, I failed today. Well, you failed today and God forgives you. What the enemy's after is the memory of the failure of today. Because he'll bring it up to haunt you. The action happens once and the memory replays over and over and over and over and over. Amen. Are you with me? Yes. God forgives the action. Satan's after the memory of the action. Now, Isaiah 9, 4, For God will break the chains that bind His people and the whip that scourges them. God will do it, He says. Are you in chains or are you a chain breaker? Right. Now, a chain breaker is someone who has come into realization that there's nothing at the other end of that chain but a memory. And if it's a memory, it's a has-been. Yep. If it's a memory, it's not happening now. So you do not make future predictions nor future plans based on a failure of a past memory. Do the math, it's dumb. It's dumb. We don't do that. God forgives it. But the memory is what the enemy puts the chain to. Now, things that constrain you, things that bind you up, things that stop you, things that stop forward progress, things that remove your freedom, these are all chains. Things that cast you into darkness. It's amazing. Yeah, I have, I know, have walked in freedom of some chains I've had in my life for 10, 15 years. And I'll be son of a gun. How in the world I find it and walk back to it, I don't know. Right. I just, I just it beats anything I've ever seen. But I'll walk back to it, and I want it tied around my leg. Now, here's the problem with the chain. When we agree with the chain around our leg, which is a non-truth, but we believe it just the same, when we come into agreement with this chain that's around our leg, it's your best friend. Here's how a chain works. It operates off of your loyalty. You will be loyal to a chain. You will be loyal to your best friend 
It convinces you it's your best friend. Then you'll be loyal. Well, nobody wants to break loyalty, but that's part of the human nature. We have to see it as the lie that it is. Now, great strength and great power. Many African cultures revere the African elephant as a symbol of strength and power. It is also praised for its size, longevity, stamina, mental fa faculties, cooperative spirit, and its loyalty. It is said that the elephant brings balance to the animal kingdom in the jungle. Isn't that amazing? You say when the elephant comes, you can be at a watering hole and a big elephant comes in. You can have lions, tigers, alligators, whatever. Big elephant comes in. It's like, say, everybody just starts behaving. <laughs> the elephant's on the scene. Everybody kind of calms down, lets them drink the water. Then when the elephant goes up, all these small deer and antelope and all, they'll get around the elephant and drink because they know the elephant's on the scene. The elephant carries a lot of weight, a lot of power, a lot of strength, but only when the elephant knows who he is. When the elephant has the chain around its leg and it's tied off to nothing, it can't be the one that brings balance to the jungle. Is anybody getting what I'm saying? Yeah. It's important that we live a kingdom lifestyle so that we bring a balancing to the earth. Jesus went on to say, well, let me say this. When an elephant has been controlled by a false memory, it loses its strength and power to bring balance. Now, just like the elephant, we are to bring a balance to the earth, even though it is a hostile environment. Now, if you remember some of the scripture, this one's in Matthew 15. You are the salt of the earth, and I think this teaching on lifestyle of the kingdom, a pastor will be covering this scripture. You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Point being, we bring light. We are salt. You've heard it said before, you take, I don't know, five pounds of salt and cure a 20-pound ham, I guess. Uh, salt is a preservative. It cures it. The kingdom, the people of the kingdom on this earth, we have a balancing effect as long as we're not all chained up because our strength and our power in the power of the Spirit of Christ brings a balance to your workplace, to your home, to an area, to a county, to a city. Does anybody see what I'm talking about? Yes. When I see a city in chaos, I know the believers in that area have got a lot of chains. Right. They've been chained. When you see chaos, understand Christians are bound because we bring a balancing right. to the earth. Yes. Now, when the elephant is controlled by a false reality, he, he ceases to be true to his true identity. We have been now a new creation. We have been transformed. But if we keep these chains on us, we cease to be who we're going to be. You can't, don't say Christianity doesn't work if you're still walking around with a lot of chains. You've yet to try it. Yeah. Can, you, can somebody hear what I'm saying? Yes. You say, well, Alan, what are these chains? I don't know. You're going to ask, I have to ask the Lord. all I know. It's between you and God. Now, he also ceases from living the lifestyle he was created to live. Right. As we're Christians and believers, do I think we can be set free of chains? Yes, I do. But what we've got to understand, as long as that elephant is chained by a false reality, he ceases from living the lifestyle he was created to live. Right. He was created to live a lifestyle when he came to the water and hold everybody paid attention. Jesus. Why? Because power just showed up. Right. 
The elephant doesn't have to say, hey, everybody, I'm coming, give me respect. What's happened to the church today in the world? We've lost our respect. Yes. We've lost our respect. Why? Because we've got so many chains on us. Yep. Come on. We are not living up into our lifestyle yes. of believers. Our lifestyle, we walk on the scene, people say this power just showed up. All the demons of hell will back up from that watering hole. I just promise you, it's the way it works. Right. All the alligators and everything. Yeah, they're there, but they'll back up. Come on. I'm going to show you how they do it. Boom. Strength is activated when we remember. Now, wow, it's 1136. Let me see if I can do this. Judges. And Samson called unto the Lord and said, Oh, Lord, God, remember me. Did y'all see that? Samson called unto the Lord God, said, he, was, he had his eyes poked out. He was there tied between two pillars. And he said, God, remember me. Remember my strength. Pray thee and strengthen me. Samson called on God to remember. So God went in his remembering, and he gave Samson the strength he once had. But God had to remember to go get it. Did you know that you were thought of in God before the foundations of the world? Did you know that? Did you know that when God thought of you before the foundations of the world, that was before the world fell? So when God remembers you, He remembers you before the fall because He goes back into His remembering, and in that remembering, He empowers you to live today. Because God remembers. That's where you get your strength. Because God remembers you before the fall of man. And He's calling you to walk unto who he remembers you to be. Is anybody getting anything I'm saying? Yeah, That's where the power is. Now here's the problem with our memory. Our memory is too short-sighted. God's is long-sighted. Yeah. God's asking us to remember with him before the foundations of the world. God's trying to bring you in line, alignment before the fall of man. Amen. That you'll live unto who you're going to be. God sees you when you receive Christ. He sees you before the foundations of the world. Can anybody, that sounds too big to believe, don't it? I'm telling you the truth. You maybe can't believe it here, but I know good well you got to feel it here. Yeah. It's God. It's in the memory, in the remembrance. We reach into the remembering for the power that is needed for the now. Your bad memories create chains around your leg. That's the reason we want to take all of these events of life to the cross of Christ. Because the cross of Christ will bring a happy ending to every memory. Amen. That's right. Now, you might have to do some forgiveness. You say, Alan, you don't know what they did to me. The only thing I can tell you is what God says That's, about it. Come on. Now, God is pulling us back to our original remembering. Amen. Now, I want to, to try to teach you a little something here. You test what I say. God is pulling us back to our original remembering. God's trying to get us to align with He thought about us before the foundations of the earth. He's now given us an opportunity to clue in with Him. You give us a book, we can go to help, help us clue it in. When we start doing that, God is pulling. God is pulling us back to the original remembering. Can you see why I say you got to leave your elementary remembering and move on into a more ancient remembering that God had about you before the foundations of the world. I, I know God. I don't, it's, I don't know if anybody will believe that. 
What I told you is the truth. You test it. Now, God's pulling us back to our original remembering before the foundations of the world. Now, watch this. We are returning to our created purpose. When we walk in that, then there was a reason God created us before the fall of man. You're not average. Okay, here, here's what it looks like. See if it sounds like your memory. You're not average. Do not allow this thinking to turn into a spiritual disease that will destroy you. You are, Say, I'm not average. Not average. How, how'd that feel? <laughs> I'm not normal. Oh, I lost a few of you there. <laughs> Let's try this one. I am abnormal. I am abnormal. Okay, that's okay. I thought I'd find one somewhere. In there. <laughs> the world tries to make everybody average. Wow. Wow. The world system is everybody's average. That takes away from the personal identity that God has created us all in. Nobody's average. Wow. That's a lie. It's not true. Don't accept it. It'll dumb you down. It's not true. Everybody's special. You're like a snowflake. God didn't make one of you. Glory, hallelujah. <laughs> Do not allow this thinking to turn into a spiritual disease that will destroy you. When you start assuming that you're just average, you're not walking in the kingdom lifestyle. When the elephant walks up to the water hole and everybody says, whoa, that's not average. Yes. I don't want you to accept yourself as average. I want you to accept yourself as when you walk into Walmart and go, whoa. Yes. I, I, I'm not kidding. I'm serious. Serious I can be. If you do not address this lie that the world gives us within you, this disease will be passed on to the next generation. You're not average. You're a Christian. You've been born again by the blood of Christ. That's not average. Yep. The cure to this disease is to believe God. Here's what God says you are. You are from God, little children, and have overcome them. Because greater is he who is in you than he who is in the world. That's right. Come on. You walk into Walmart. Man. Greater is in you he that is in you that is in the world, and you're gonna you're gonna look like Clint Eastwood or somebody in the spirit. <laughs> if you believe that, you'll throw your shoulders back. That's right. If you really believe that, greater is he that is in you. If that sounds foreign to you, that just shows you how far away from that truth you are. Come on. Greater is he that is in you. You're not average, you're a winner. As Brian Cohen likes to say, you're the head, not the tail. Look here. No, and all these things, we are what? More We're more than a conqueror. Now, to me, somebody who conquers something wins. Is that right? Yes, that's right. So he's saying here, you're more than a winner. Not only are you a winner, you're more than one. My question to you is this. How far is your reality from that statement? How far from how you see yourself is that statement? Wow. Come on. Come on, you got to be honest with yeah. yourself. Just how far away... How much of life has beaten you down to you, not only do you think you're average, you think you're below average. Wow. But you're in the kingdom of God. Come on, somebody. If you're in the kingdom of God, you're not below average. You're not average. You're above average. And when you walk at the water hole, everybody says, whoa. Why? Because well, as long as the elephant knows who he is, he gets respect. When he doesn't know who he is, he goes back to the chain. The chain has a pull to it. And there's nobody on the other end. Now watch it. I want to show you something in the spirit here. Push and pull. It's 1145. Give me just a second, okay? Come on. Push and pull. Yeah. What does push and pull mean? 
push in life will run out, it has limitations. In other words, you can do it in Christianity. You say, I'm going to push. I'm going to be this. I'm going to push my way through. I'm not talking about pushy, being pushy. If you try to push in life, it'll, you'll, it, it has limitations. You can, but it's limited. Pull in life is endless with no limitations. Now, the kingdom lifestyle, when God's trying to pull you, it has no limitations. If anybody hear what I'm saying. We're, we're wanting God to pull. If you come here, it's our prayer you were pulled here, not pushed. Come on. That's our prayer. I don't know why anybody would come unless she's pulled. I mean, you can leave your money. We, we want your money. You can leave it and not even come these days. Hopefully, you're being pulled by the Spirit of God. Yes. Now, follow the pull. Don't try to do the push. Come on. Follow the pull. Jesus. An elephant can pull almost twice its body weight. And it can push about half. Wow. Psalms 33 says this, God, you pulled me out of the grave, gave me another chance at life when I was down and out. Jesus. Can anybody feel that one? Yeah. Come on. Feel it? Yeah. That's a pull. That's a pull of the Spirit. Jesus. We get ready to worship. You can't wait till, gosh, you uh, can't wait till we worship. That's a pull. If you come here and sit down, boy, I wish Alan to hush and get on so I can get out of here. That's a push. Oh. I can feel just a little. Not much, not much. Just a little. <laughs> You're looking for the pull of the Spirit. Jesus. If you go up to somebody and they tell you off all the time, you're not going to feel much of a pull there. No. When somebody's trying to push into your life, yeah. what are you going to feel? Pushed. They're trying to push. On, There's a difference. When you're in the Spirit, when God's involved, He pulls. Now, you can answer the pull or not. <clears throat> but did you know that you can run faster with a pull than you can with a push? Wow. So as a, as, a, as, a, as a lifestyle, as a kingdom lifestyle, we want to learn how to be sensitive to the pull of God. That's right. Being sensitive to His pull. Well, I feel like I'm being pulled over here. I'm being pulled over here. I'm just not like, okay, I'm going to go over here and witness to this guy. That's a push. If you go into Walmart and there's somebody sitting over there and they got their hands in their face and they're crying, you, you find yourself walking straight and you're going sideways the whole time. You're being pulled to go up. Go! Go with the pull of the Spirit. God, you pulled me Jesus. out of the grave, gave me another chance of life. When I was down and out. Now here's the push and pull of the mind. John 6, 44. No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws him. Y'all see that? And I will raise him up at the last day. No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws him. You got to understand this. When there's a drawing going on and you can feel you're being drawn, you, please, please, hear, please believe yes. this. You can't be drawn unless the Father Himself sent the draw. Right. You're being drawn. Yield to that draw. Philippians 2, 5. Let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus. The same one. Now, it takes courage, and I've got to hurry here to say yes to God, to agree with how great you are in Christ Jesus. Wow. Now, church, you've got to hear this. You've got to hear that in Christ Jesus, you can do all things. All things work together. You've got to get this. If you're going to have a kingdom lifestyle, you're going to have to change some of your stinking thinking now. You're going to have to agree with who God said you were before the foundations of the earth and live unto it. That's all you got to do. Jesus. Just, you just got to get on with it, move into that. To seize your mind for the kingdom, it takes courage to do what I'm saying. 
It takes courage to seize your mind for the kingdom. Nothing is more powerful than when an elephant has a changed mind. You imagine that? Elephant got that chain around his leg. All of a sudden, he figures out that chain ain't nothing. Look out, somebody. Look out, water and hole. Can you imagine? Nothing's more powerful than when a Christian gets set free of the chain around their leg. Come on. Nothing's more powerful. The power hits the fan, so to speak. <laughs> Nothing's more powerful. Nothing's more powerful than the moment a believer gets set free of that chain, that lie. Come on. Romans says this. Do not conform for the pattern of this world, but be ye transformed. By the what? The renewing of your mind. How do we get transformed? By the renewing of our mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, His good, pleasing, and perfect will. The transformation. A changed mind. When in the kingdom lifestyle, you learn to encourage yourself. I've said this a little. I'm going to say it again here. In the kingdom lifestyle, you have to learn to encourage yourself. Because the elephant knows who he is, he doesn't look over his back and say, now I'm going to this water hole, reckon something will happen. The elephant knows who he is. The elephant encourages itself because he knows who he is. It says this in Philippians, I can do all things through him who strengthens me. That's either true or false. That's right. I can do how many things? All things. Listen, if you're having a hard time, encourage yourself. Read Philippians 4, 13. I can do all things through. And you got to believe it. Is that all right to do that in the faith? Believe what we're reading? Yeah. Now, <clears throat> Isaiah. <clears throat> but they who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. And they shall walk and not faint. That's either true or that's false. It's just true. Encourage yourself. It's true. When in the kingdom lifestyle, you must stop doing this, yes. discouraging yourself. Yes. You must stop speaking words of defeat. You must stop speaking words of failure. You must stop speaking that you were a loser. That's all I had. You got to stop it. Just stop it. Just, just, you get the idea? Just stop it. Nobody's interested in that. You're not either, unless she's trying to get attention. Just stop it. What else did I have? I done lost my place. Now, you must tell yourself, Isaiah, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. And every tongue which rises against you in judgment you shall condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is from me, says the Lord. That's what you say to yourself. Hey, you want something else to say? You must tell yourself, the Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God, my strength, in whom will I trust? That's what you're going to tell yourself. Romans 8, 37. Yet in all these things we are more than our conquerors through him who loved us. You don't tell yourself you're fearful, you're this, or you're a No, you tell yourself this stuff. Why? Because this is what God said before the fall of man. Now watch this one. You must tell yourself, this is a long one, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? There you go. Whom? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked came against me to eat up my flesh, my enemies and foes, they stumbled and fell. Though an army may encamp around me, my heart shall not fear. Though war may rise against me, in this I will be confident. That's who you say you are. Now, here's what you got to understand. I, I put it like this. The kingdom lifestyle is a lifestyle of it is written. Say it with me. It is written. It is written. If we're going to walk into the kingdom lifestyle, be transformed. You have to walk into this truth of Jesus. It is written. It just is it's written. When you start giving a self-report, say, no, 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 no. It's not kingdom lifestyle. It is written. Watch this one. But he answered and said, It is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. God thought of you before the foundations of the world. The deal is, you want to say it is written. God 
God had you in His mind before the foundations of the world. When the enemy comes to you, I'm, I'm going to give you a little example when the enemy comes to you. It is written, what if the devil says to you, you are not really saved? Anybody had that one? Come on. God will get you for lying too. Is, is it Okay, come on. Has the devil ever been to say, has anybody ever wondered about if they're saved or not? I think, I think back long enough, probably about everybody has. <clears throat> All right, well, if the devil comes to you and says, I don't think you're really saved. Or you're like, am I saved or am I not saved? All right, what are you going to say to it? You're going to say, okay, devil, it is written. Now, all right, let's see. You say it is written. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thy heart that God had raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. You say, devil, it's written. I've done that. And it is written. And since it's written and I've done that, guess what, devil? I'm saved. You see, you tell him what's written. Watch this one. If he needs one more, if he's a little stubborn, give him this one. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Well, I did that. That's right. Satan, it's written. Now, here's what I want you to get. Everything else in life is that it's written. Yes. We've got to quit confessing what we're saying and go with what God's got written. Come on. Come on. If we're going to live in this kingdom lifestyle. That's right. Am I done? You can have a new day and not a new mind. You cannot step into your future thinking like your past. Amen. You can't step into the future thinking like your past. We've got to go with it is written. We've got to drop who we say, our big ideas. Well, block, are y'all not tired of your ideas of yourself yet? Yeah. I'm sorry, I don't even believe myself anymore. I couldn't have failed as much as I say. I wouldn't be here. Like I told one old, had these two farmers, and every time they got together, they'd talk about how bad the milk prices were and how bad the corn prices and how bad everything was. Every, they did it for 45 years. One of them looked over at the other and said, we've been going broke for 45 years. How are we still here? <laughs> we can't believe our own stuff. We can't believe it. We have to go with what it is written. The kingdom lifestyle. Resolve means to decide firmly on a course of action. That's my altar call. You can stand here just a second. Here, here's the deal. I believe with all my heart that there's people sitting in here today and probably people online that you still have some chains around your leg. It's come from future failures. For some reason, we are convinced of the truth of that chain. Now, what we're going to do today is we're going to sing, we're going to pray. I've got a few uh, words of knowledge I'm going to read here in just a minute. I'm not going to read them yet. Because the first thing I want to do is I want to pray. Karen's going to lead us in a worship song. They're breaking some chains, I bet you, probably. <laughs> Listen, she came up with that song, and I had this teaching, and we didn't know it. We didn't know it till yesterday. Was it yesterday she said? All of a sudden, we're like, wow, that kind of goes together. Could be God. I, I believe you don't have to go through some class. I believe, you, I believe all you need is the truth. That's right. You test what I say. I've told you the truth. It is written that Jesus will set you free of that chain. He'll set you free of that life, of that lie of your life. The only thing you have to do is to give it to him and say, Lord, I give it to you again. I don't care if it's again. You just give it to him. So Karen's going to lead us in this song and the end of it, I'm going to read a few words, then we'll be dismissed. But if this has spoken any truth to you, today's the day. Amen. 
let's let's get on with this kingdom lifestyle and let's kick let's kick some spiritual hinder parts to the kingdom of God and let's start with ours in Jesus name the word of God says that at the name of Jesus every knee will bow so what a powerful name it is Hey, again, online family, we're back. I just want to say before we get started in the prayer time here at this prayer pod that I'm so absolutely just, I guess, run over, broken up, exposed in my heart at this message, this teaching that was just done. Um, I just want to kind of encapsulate a couple things real quick before we jump into praying, and that's this. I don't know if you've thought about it, but this chain that was holding these elephants was such a small thing as they grew bigger than their chain. This bondage that was just a small stake that they were tied to as a small elephant that exhausted them and made them feel like they didn't have power was such a small thing. As they grew in power and authority, they were so wrapped up and bound by it. And that's our thoughts. That's that that negative self-talk. Those thoughts that tear us down, those thoughts that we've maybe had someone else said over us, spoken to us, that we had judgments from, unforgiveness from, these different things that have bound us up in our minds and made us believe something about us that God never intended us for, for us to believe. So if you're out there today and there, there are things that people have spoken over you that have bound your leg, that have put you down, maybe they said you're stupid, you're ugly, you're dumb, or whatever, these tough 
hard statements, maybe worse. You, you may have been in an abusive situation, abusive relationships. And these things bound themselves around you so that whenever you go through different things in life or you need to take a leap or take risk or jump into faith or God speaks something into you, you find yourself held up because you think that thing in your mind like a recording that plays over and over. No, you can't because. And you find yourself saying, I can't, I can't, I can't. Today is the day of I can. There's no more I can't. It's I can. You can do all things through Christ your strength. All things you can do through Christ your strength. So it's time to recognize those things. So I pray that God has awakened in each one of us out there this idea, this, this heartbeat that we need to look for these patterns, these recordings, these things that play over in our minds, this negative self-speech, and stop it because it's not okay anymore. And I want to speak this kind of as a prophetic word for you online. This is for you. This is just for our online family. Listen to me. Jesus loves you. The Father loves you, and you're his child. Stop talking to his children that way. It's over. That day is over. You do not talk to God's child that way ever again because you're precious, you're beloved, you're special, you're redeemed, you're chosen, you're bought with a price, you're beloved, you're desired, you're wanted, you're hoped for. And inside of you is Christ, the hope of all glory. The whole world, the whole earth is aching and longing and groaning waiting for your revelation, for you to be revealed on the planet. This is all scripture. It's waiting on the sons and daughters of God to be revealed. So today I want to speak this into you. I want you to hear this down and deep who you down and who you are, that this is truth. So when those negative patterns show up, those negative self words, those that negative self talk, you'll recognize it, you'll capture it. You'll say, no, thank you, devil. That's done. I'm God's child. It's not okay anymore to say these things about God's child. You can, he will, he did. Amen? All right, now I need to pray for our prayer requests that came in. So I've got a few here. I've got one that just came in here. I'll get with, um, so Terry Levine just um, messaged in. Pray for the deliverance from addiction for my son, Andrew, please. We'll pray for that one first, and I'll go to the ones we have written down. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray right now, I agree with Terry, that in the name of Jesus, that there's deliverance from addiction for his son, Andrew, right now. Now, in the name of Jesus Christ, there's going to be breakthrough in the name of Jesus Christ. By the blood of Jesus, the cross of Jesus, we agree that you're going to stop the pattern, stop the addiction, and wake him up to you in Jesus' name right now. Um, I see Miss Christina. Miss Christina, it's good to see you. And I just want to say we're always praying for your son on hell. Angel's always in our prayers, so we're praying for him, and I want you to know that. So we pray blessings for Miss Christina, her family, and, and Angel, we just pray for more of your wisdom over him and breakthrough in his life in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, Ron Ross um, just messaged us earlier today. He said that his mom is passing away. And he asked for prayer for the family as they go through this process, that this is that season in her life. And so we're just going to pray that it's a, a peaceful home going and that God will give grace and mercy to the whole family. So, Father, we pray in the name of Jesus for Ron and his family. We pray blessings and grace and mercy that you'll be with them. You'll give them peace and love. Just love on them, Lord Jesus. Let them know that you're with them. Send angels and let that peace that passes all understanding come. Let it be a peaceful home going. Let it be restful. As she comes to be with you in the name of Jesus. We pray, God, that you'll give the whole family peace and grace. Send mercy in the name of Jesus and help them to know that you're with them. And Lord God, I pray that that life will be instilled versus death, that they'll be encouraged, that there'll be breakthrough in their hearts and encouragement as they sense the very nearness of your presence in Jesus' name. Lord, we love them. We pray blessings over them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, Erica Horn sent in by messenger. So again, Don't forget, there's different ways to contact us. You can put a comment right in the live feed, right on Facebook. Put in the comments your prayer requests. We'll pray for them there. You're also able to text them in to the phone number that's on the screen and email them in through the email address that's on the screen. You can message them through the page as well, and we will make sure that we get you covered. Christine, we are praying for you. I see that. Blessings to you too, hon. All right, so we're praying for um, Erica Horn. She sent this in by messenger. Um, we're praying over her, their land. We're going to pray over the heart of the person who has been stealing from them for months now. Wow. Um, 
And then she said she knows how powerful this church is in prayer. Amen. We are seeing a lot of prayers answered, aren't we? So we're going to pray for that right now. Father, we pray in the name of Jesus for Erica and her family. We pray over their land. We pray for peace over their land. We pray for rest on that land. We pray for your hand on that land in the name of Jesus Christ. We pray, God, that whoever is stealing from them, that you'll turn their hearts around and turn them for the horns. We pray in the name of Jesus that somehow right now you'll wake them up, stir them up, and let them change their ways and give back what they've stolen and bless others. We pray that they'll make a, you'll make a friend out of that person that's been a thief and turn them from enemy to blesser and encourager. I pray that you'll turn that person around. They'll know you in Jesus' name. So, Father, we don't curse them. We bless them in the name of Jesus Christ, by the blood of Jesus and the cross of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. I love it. All right, that looks like all of them for today. So we're going to go ahead and pray and close this up. If you send in prayers after this is over or after we go off, if you're watching this and it's not live, put your prayers in, send them in in text message, email, or in the comments, and we will make sure that you're covered on the next broadcast. We will pray for them. And again, all these prayer requests always go in with us to our prayer room. We pray for them all week long. So keep sending them in. We'll keep praying. So Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray right now for all of our online family, just blessings and encouragement and life and hope in Jesus' name. We pray that you'll inspire them and let them know you're with them. And today, break the chains. Today, stop the negative self-talk. Today, stop the patterns in Jesus' name. Today, redeem. Today, awaken. Today, bring life. Show them the power and authority that you've given them and wake them up inside in Jesus' name to what you're going to do next remind them of who you know they are from the very beginning of time and then call them into that in Jesus' name. We're not going to look back at our yesterday. We're looking back at what you say about us and we're stepping into the now. Remind us of what you say about us and bring us into our future. Help us to act in the now and walk into the future. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, folks, you can see church is out, and there's a whole lot of celebration of fellowship going on. I'm going to jump into that in just a minute. So we're going to let you go for today. Please jump back in here with us. Always come back. We're always live on Wednesdays and Sundays, and we love having you with us. You make this the best part of my part of ministry. So, again, thanks for being with us at New Life this week. God bless you. Have an amazing week, and we'll see you next time. I saw it out of the, like, I was looking up. Hey, you can tell well and good, hey.